Uh, tell us a little bit about your firm. Sure. Well, you know, I started at Kleiner Perkins in 2003 and got to see how an amazing venture firm runs and operates. And over my 11 years there, one of the trends that I saw happening in the industry was these successful firms getting bigger and bigger and raising more capital. And it turns out when you're investing out of a billion dollar fund as opposed to a 300 or 400 million dollar fund, your check sizes get larger. Instead of writing a five million dollar check, you're writing a 15, 20 million dollar check. I'm an entrepreneur, an engineer at heart. I love working with early stage companies. And so I saw the opportunity, along with my partner, Neil Sequeira, who is a general catalyst for 11 years as well, to start a new fund focused on the early stage. It's funny because late stage is, is all the rage it is. Uh, right now, but you're clearly stating that there is room still for early stage investing. Absolutely. In fact, it's kind of interesting when you look just structurally at the industry. The barriers to entry for seed funds are relatively low, so to speak. You can band together some friends and create a $20 million fund. But to start an early stage venture fund, you have to have more than $100 million in capital. You have to have a track record, which means that you've likely been at a venture firm before and have been crazy enough to decide to leave and then find a partner to start a new firm. Yeah. Nest um, speaks to sort of your, your overall vision of a, of a connected home, mm -hmm. if, if you will. And now you have Nest and Google kind of back together again, right? I think we can, is that the, the best way to put it? Well, I'd say, you know, when we invested in Nest back in 2010, people didn't talk about the Internet of Things. Um, but there was sort of this obvious fact that the, you know, the environment was important and technology was going to make it even more important and integrated into our technology. And so we saw the opportunity in Nest to be the very early tip of the iceberg for what is becoming the smart home. And I think what you're seeing um, with, you know, Google's acquisition of Nest and now Amazon's acquisition of Ring and Eero, you know, these big consumer companies are going big because they see the home as a really important part of the consumer future. Yeah. But right. given how important the home is, the connected home is mm -hmm. to those mega platforms, mm -hmm. it's dangerous territory, as Eero found out, in yeah. order to compete. So how do, you, how do you think of them as acquirers and how do you think of them as competitors? Now, well, I think uh, the interesting thing about, you know, innovation in this area is that uh, the innovation hasn't historically come from these companies, but they've sort of gobbled it up and combined it into their own platforms to create even more um, power. And so I think, it, you know, it is both exciting because we're still very early and there's lots of opportunity, but also dangerous. And in the case of Eero, when they were going head to head with Wi-Fi, they had a very big direct competitor in Google, which was one of the large giants. And unfortunately, Apple decided to pull out. So that left Amazon as the one large consumer company left standing who was interested. What other sort of areas do you see as, as hot and up and coming since you're looking at the very earliest stages of companies that we will think about and talk about uh, for the next hopefully 100 years, but maybe a few years from now. Yeah, well, I think there's just so much going on. It's hard to even know where to start. You, you heard earlier in the show the replatforming of enterprise software. You know, I'd say one of the trends that you know we're excited about is the fact that technology doesn't just apply to the enterprise or the consumer, but it's going deep in every single vertical. So you're seeing, um, you know, technology disrupt healthcare. You're seeing technology disrupt logistics. We have an incredible logistics company, Airspace, that's that's taking off really nicely. Technology is disrupting education and so that's the thing that's exciting for us is to try to figure out which of these industries um, you know are, are most right Trey one topic I want to I want to make sure that we hit on another Kleiner alum um, uh, uh, Aileen Lee mm -hmm. um, started an incredibly important organization or was among many founders um, in all rays all Rays is dedicated to more women founders and more women funders. Mm -hmm. I know this is something that you're also passionate about. Um, talk to us just a little bit about what you've seen evolve over the course of the last uh, several years in Silicon Valley yeah. uh, as it pertains to this and, issue. And let me say, yeah. as you ask that question, the, the numbers don't lie and they don't tell a great story. Only 9% of venture investors are women. 71% of venture firms have zero women. Only 11% of investors are women. But there is an evolving face, if you will, of the valley. Do you feel it? Oh, absolutely. I would say it's it's very different from when you know I started in the industry as an entrepreneur back in 2000. Um, you know, I'd say organizations like Allray's the purpose is to get the small group of women that have been in this industry and really create um, momentum and help others move forward. So you, you cited some really important stats. Um, when we started All Raise, the number of women investors in the industry was 9%. Today it's actually 11%. So we've already made big progress. Our goal is within 
within 10 years to move to double that and get that, um, you know, to 18 percent. And uh, and it's things like that Allray's is doing, like um, you know, helping with hiring and helping um, with access to our investors and all sorts of you know the networking importance. Uh, Are you investing more with women today than you did historically? Um, you know, I would say it's all about the network. So it's where you're spending your time and what bubbles up to the top. And the important thing is that, you know, during my time at Kleiner, um, I don't think there was ever another woman on the cap table. Uh, and I probably worked with 30 to 40 companies during my 11 years there. And if I look at my experience today, I'm on two boards where all of the outside directors are women. Hmm. So I do see an, an absolutely massive sea change, at least in the investing community and, um, you know, in the number of new women investors entering the market. Could be a year with a record number of women-led IPOs. That's right? what I'm looking for. So we have Jennifer Tejada at Pager Duty, who's already come out. Um, and, uh, and there are a handful of ones. Uh, you know, Grail is led by an amazing woman. Um, we've got Real Real and a handful of other companies that I'm hopeful. So, I, lastly, I think, you know, just also, you know, Shout out to Board List for all the work that they're Absolutely. doing to bring more women mm -hmm. onto boards, both public Absolutely. and private. Shout out to Hashtag Angels. I mean, there's an extraordinary, you know, kind of movement afoot that I feel that for the first time I feel like has critical mass. And I think it's the obligation of not only women entrepreneurs and founders and funders, but of their male counterparts to get on board mm. and change the numbers that you talked about. So uh, lastly, I just want to ask you, I mean, th this this article, people are talking about it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how the Kleiner, I'll hold it up, how the Kleiner yeah. Perkins empire fell. It seems to be a hot topic um, out here. As we said, you had a prominent role there. Um, did you leave because you felt like you couldn't spread your wings there, that it was just too hard for up and coming talent to get to the highest parts of the ladder, if you will. Yeah, you know, I left in 2014, and that at that time, the organization was a massive multi-stage organization. And the big issue for me is I couldn't focus and do what I was best at, which was early stage investing, where you're super hands-on with entrepreneurs. Um, you're on their board. You're helping them figure out product market fit and scale their business. Um, that's what I wanted to do. So it became clear that, you know, while Kleiner, you know, has been an incredible place to learn and grow, it just wasn't going to be my future. Yeah, it's great.